Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to iterate through the keys of an object with a for in statement. Ah yeah, this is what this makes more sense than the one what we did last time. Sometimes you may need to iterate through all the keys within an object. This requires a specific syntax in JavaScript called a for in statement. For our users objects, this could look like this. Uh, we want to for we're going to say let the users in user let user. So this is the way that I read this. We're making a for loop, and we're going to say we're going to allow the variable user in the users object, and then so. With each user, we're going to be able to console log out each individual user, like that. <coughs> in this statement, we defined a variable user. And as you can see, this variable was reset during each iteration to each of the object's key as the statement looped through the object, resulting in each user's name being printed to the console. Note, objects do not maintain an ordering to stored keys like arrays do. What does that mean? That means that the object, yeah, they're not necessarily in this order. Thus, a key's position on an object or the relative order in which it appears is irrelevant when referencing or accessing that key. We've defined a function count online, which accepts one argument, a user's object. Use a for in statement within the function to loop through the user's object passed into the function and return the number of users whose online property is set to true. An example of an, a user's object which could be passed to count online is shown below. Each user has an online property with either true or false values. So what we want to do is count, yeah, within the function, into the function, return the number of users whose online is set to true. So we're going to say, we're going to first off we'll say let uh, online users We'll set that to zero initially. In the end, we're going to return online users. So now all we need to do is iterate through the object and check whether or not they're online, and then add that to the online users incrementation. Let's see what happens when we console.log uh, count online. Uh, So currently we're just returning zero because there's no users in there. But if we were to pass in this object, um, so we're going to say let uh, test user, we'll set that equal to this object. I always like to make, I always try to clean my code up so it's easy to read. So this makes it easier to read. Now here, what we expect is for there to be one because Alan is offline, Jeff is online, and Sarah is offline. There's three users, but we only want the ones that are online, so that would be Jeff. So this should be one when we get this right. And so um, the next thing we can do <coughs> is um, we do the, um, we'll do a for loop. So we want to say for, and then we're going to say let the user in um, users object, right? So that's this guy. We're taking the parameter that's being passed in. <coughs> And then we're going to say inside of this object, if the user, if uh, user dot online is equal to true, we could probably not do true, but I'm just going to make that so it's explicit. Um, so basically we're saying we're going to go through each, uh, each of the user in the object. And if that user dot online, which means here, this user dot online is going to render out to this guy, this guy, and then this guy. If it's equal to true, then we want online users, we want to add one to that, right? So that would be like, that's like saying online uh, users plus one. But this is just the more verbose way to do it. The, the more clean way and the way I always do it is you go plus one like that. And um, yeah. So it's not working right now. This is at zero. It needs to be one. Let's console.log user and see what happened. What happens if we console.log users object? Oh, I see what's going on. We need to add test users to our example case. Cool. Okay, so now we're, we're rendering out the object here. So this console log is getting, giving us the object. And then here we're also um, console logging out each individual user. Um, now let's say user online. 
Okay, so what we need to do here is we're going to, well, we've got the key name coming out, right? Um, we've got user. And so Alan, Jeff, and Sarah. But what we need to do is be able to say um, the user's object on the user. And so and then we're going to get whether or not it's online. So this is going to be, give us the, um, the object. And then we can go online like this. We can do it in bracket notation. I don't like to mix bracket notation and dot notation. To me, it makes more sense to use it. So what we're doing with each user, we're getting Alan, Jeff, uh, Sarah, and Ryan, right? Console.log, uh, the user. And so here, we're Alan, Jeff, Sarah. But, what, but that's not what we need. We need it to be there. And so we know if we were to um, say test users and then in brackets, Alan, then we would get this online thing. And so that's why we need to move it. So that's why we move it onto the bracket notation. And uh, I actually don't think that you need this because this will render out to be a truthy statement. Um, if, if it's false, if um, user's object, user online, if it's false, this is gonna, not going to pass. So you actually don't need that uh, is equal to true. Um, all you have to do is just render that out. So if the user is online, essentially, um, you can add, uh, and then we, then we increment the user's object. So for the first one, we go Alan, it's not online, so we don't increment. The second one is Jeff, he is online, and so therefore we increment up. The third per person is Sarah, not online, therefore we don't do anything. And then finally, we re return the value of this. Let's uh, run the tests and see if it passes. Great. And um, yeah, one way that I would like, um, I would do this is I would just make this like, um, um, online status and then I would make this a variable so I'd be like let online status equal to here and then we've got a little bit cleaner work because we, we know we're checking each user and this just looks a little bit more verbose this is easier for me to understand in terms of just making the code readable and so yeah I think that this would still p pass the test what I did, just did there by moving that this out to here is called refactoring. And so I, I like to refactor code a little bit um, because usually when you get it right the first time, you're, there's a tendency to just um, walk away. But if you kind of spend a minute refactoring it and thinking about it, thinking it through, you can make your um, functions uh, more easily, easier to read. And you can also sort of make sure that you don't have an issue with test cases. Um, to be honest, all this was just for the testing. We actually don't need any of that console logging it was just helpful for me to debug it so yeah we run the test it still passes so yeah hope you guys enjoyed this one thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next lesson